Well, for more on the energy side of the cryptocurrency story, I'm joined by Karen Howe, a technology reporter for Quartz. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So give us an idea just how profitable can cryptocurrency mining be and how do miners get paid? That's a really great question. So um, through my reporting, I discovered that there are students around the world that are mining cryptocurrency in their dorm rooms using free university electricity. And um, I spoke with one student. His name is Mark. He's a junior at MIT. And his operation was quite lucrative um, through mining a digital currency called Ethereum. He actually told me he made roughly $20,000 in profit over about a year time period. Now it's interesting because obviously college students have the benefit of having the colleges pay for their electricity, but how much of a trend is that around the world? Are we seeing that among global students? Absolutely. Um, I found students that were mining in the US, in Canada, in Singapore. Um, there are also many other people after I published my story that came forward and told me that they were also taking advantage of free electricity, not necessarily just at their universities, but perhaps um, in their apartments because their landlords fold their electricity bill into their rent. So I think this is definitely a global phenomenon that will probably grow as cryptocurrency becomes more and more popular. Now tell us about the energy needs that come with cryptocurrency mining, as well as some of the challenges. A lot of environmentalists are saying this is really an issue. That is correct. I think um, the energy costs can be high. Um, in my particular reporting with students, they weren't actually mo they weren't actually measuring how much electricity it cost because it is free for them within the universities. Um, so the scope of my reporting didn't cover how much it really can be for these particular students. Um, but what I can tell you is there are some really interesting stories about the way that they dealt with um, the side effects of the energy consumption. Um, because the computers that they use to mine these cryptocurrencies are running constantly, 24-7, they generate an immense amount of heat, which might give you a sense of how much energy it's really using. Um, so one story, Mark, again, the MIT student that I spoke to, he had around five computers that were running around the clock in his room. And in the middle of the Boston winter, he had his heating off in his room. And the heat from the computers itself um, was enough to heat his room and actually melt any chocolate that he left in his room. So that gives you um, a more of a, a visual description of how much energy it might be costing to mine this cryptocurrency. And people clearly getting very creative about what to do with all the energy that, that's coming off of these machines. But given the volatility that cryptocurrencies still experience, is the economic payoff worth all this effort of mining it? That's a great question. For these students, it definitely is because they don't have to pay for the electricity and um, because they don't have the operational cost, electricity is the main operational cost, they are buffered from the volatility of the market. Um, for other people that might be interested in mining at home that would pay electricity, it is a question of whether or not, um, depending on how much the electricity costs within their region, it would be worthwhile. Um, some of the students did encounter financial risks um, because they put up money of their own onto um, Bitcoin exchanges or onto various mining marketplaces. And because of the nature of the crypto cryptocurrency world, um, at the unregulated nature of it, they ended up getting hacked and losing their money. Um, but again, for these students, it was different because they don't pay much of an operational cost up front. But for other people, it could definitely be a risk. So then in terms of security, how prevalent is it that some of these platforms can get hacked and what can miners do to protect themselves? Um, I think in terms of the prevalence, there have been several major hacks that have happened over the years. Um, one of the biggest ones was Mt. Gox, which was one of the most popular Bitcoin exchanges in Japan. Um, and it ended up losing all of its money and declaring bankruptcy. Um, more recently, there was another one, uh, NiceHash, which is this online marketplace where people, where miners can put up their computational power for sale, had um, a smaller ha hack than Mt. Gox. And um, Mark, in this instance, he lost around $500. Um, 
it's hard to estimate how often this happens, how often it'll happen more in the future. Um, but the ways that these miners can protect themselves is to definitely be careful about which marketplaces they choose, which cryptocurrencies they choose to mine, which ones they choose to invest in, um, and also not to put too much upfront cost into their operations. There's certainly some risks and rewards there. Thank you so much, Karen Howe, technology reporter at Quartz.